boy, 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 do I got a story to tell y'all about how the Bulldogs and the Eagles went head to head down there at Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. No pun intended, but I can promise you it was a dog fight. You feel me? Them boys was out there battling like the MEAC celebration bowl was on the line. And with the way these two teams have been playing this season, you would think that it would be a one sided, easy victory. And I know you did too. That's why you clicked on the video. Let's get straight to it. Game Day Nation, let's ride. Start out the game on this starting short, the Eagles leave Kendall Flowers on this wide open just check down route to give them a first down. The Bulldogs move the ball all the way down the field to get about at the 40 yard line. Corey Field try to find his receiver for the first down after they try to go forward on fourth, but they cannot convert. Turnover on downs, North Carolina Central ball. North Carolina Central gets the ball and Davius Richard has this nice read option that fakes out the whole defense as he tries to get this first down on the ground. Very next play, Richards drops back and he finds his receiver Jaquan Davis as he gets a first down. They try to go right back to that read option, but the Bulldogs just blow it up in the backfield. The Bulldogs get the ball back and Corey Fields drops it off to his receiver. Rakeem White tries to be too pretty instead of just getting the first down. And if you could see, but the zebra is in my way, the Eagles force a fumble and get the ball right in the red zone. Hey man, when them Bulldogs backs was against the wall, they did not fold as Zion Keith comes in off the blitz off the edge to sack Richards, almost put them out of field goal range. And the reason why that sack was so important was for this right here. Knocked them back just enough for him to miss that field goal. Field goals came up huge in this game. The Bulldogs get the ball back and they still could not get anything moving on offense. Another three and out for the Bulldogs. And this fake right here faked me out, so I know it faked y'all out. But the Eagles finally get a big hole to open up for Latrell Cola, who takes it in all the way to the house to get the first points of the game. But that's all the Bulldogs needed was a little bit of momentum to get them going. Corey Fields finds his receiver, Richard Bailey, for a first down. And this was the name of the game. Corey Fields finding Shaq Davis anywhere, any way possible, and he's going to come down with it. With your offense moving slow like that at the start, plays like that are huge for your quarterback's confidence as now he's getting a little bit of roll on. And while your quarterback is flowing, get that offensive line in as well as they dump off a nice screen pass to Alex James, which lets their lineman get out and block, and now they're moving the ball good down the field. Like I said, man, them little passes are huge for his confidence as Corey finds his number one receiver, Shaq Davis, who gets one, two, three feet in, which are also good on Sundays. And whenever the offense puts up points, that defense dows it up, man. They were flying around and getting the Richards all day as they come up with a huge sack on third down. And I mean, whenever they get the ball back, I mean, if I was Corey, I would throw it to number one as well. I mean, Shaq Davis, come on now. Whenever he's doing stuff like this, why not feed him? And one little eagle is not going to take down that bulldog. And I'm telling y'all, man, them eagles was stuffing the run. They was looking real stout at times, man. Whenever they needed to bow their backs, they did. But somehow, every single time, number one, Shaq Davis just gets open every time whenever they need him. But you can't go to the well too often, so you got to put it on the ground too. But Alex James said, man, I got this as he picks up a first down. The Bulldogs get all the way down in the red zone, and I wonder if they finally can convert. But thanks to Khalil Ellis, yes, they can. Even though he gets flipped and lands it, but he don't care. As long as he get inside that chicken box, he chilling. 14-7 Bulldogs. Richards get the ball back on offense, and he's like, man, I'm finna show y'all why I'm the number two ranked HBCU quarterback, man, as he breaks off this nice run for a first down. And me talking about him being number two, he showed it right here. He showed it right here. Yeah, I'm ranked number two in HBCU football, and this is why I'm him as I drop off a deep bomb to Quentin McCow to tie the game up. And you know it's gonna be a game whenever there's some controversy. Right here, the North Carolina Central defender hits Shaq Davis on the pass, which ends up getting flagged. In my opinion, it honestly shouldn't be a flag. Let's go back and review why. Now, if you look at the left side of the screen, you can see the defender doesn't know that Shaq is catching the ball, so he's going to break up the pass regardless. My question is, if Shaq caught this ball and he proceeded to knock the ball out with the same type of hit, is it still a flag? Let me know in the comments. With the extra yards for the penalty, the Bulldogs move it up and they hand the ball up and they're trying to get them yards on the ground. Like I said, man, they're trying to pound on the ground as they give off this wide receiver jet screen to Tyrese Nick as he tries to go over the top and fight for extra yards. And after the Jeff Hardy Swanton bomb attempt to get into the touchdown, they hand it off and they punch it in anyways. Bulldogs go up 20 to 14. With under three minutes left before halftime, Richards is trying to dial up with his receivers to make sure he can get something going before the half. 
The Bulldogs was causing so much pressure that on this third down, Richards ain't got no other option but to roll out and run as he gets popped by one of the Bulldog defenders right down there near the 40. And man, like I said, that defense was turning it up. Richards was feeling exactly how Shador felt last year in the Celebration Bowl. But this right here by number 11 gives an unsportsmanlike penalty for the Bulldogs and which moves the ball up for Central to give them another free first down before the half. But like I said, man, them Bulldogs going to bend, but they are not going to break as they have an open Devin Smith open, but he cannot connect. This holds the Eagles to take a field goal as they take the lead 24-20. Out the half, Corey Fields finds his number one threat. You already know the guy. I ain't even got to say his name for good completion for first down. I promise you, this is not a Shaq Davis highlight show, but I promise you, that's what it was on the field. <laughs> Shaq Davis gets another touchdown. To put them up 26-24, to I ain't going to lie, man. When that South Carolina State offense is clicking, they're going to be a dangerous team because, man, they were getting to Richards anytime they wanted on third and long. But the Eagles defense turned up as well as they got the ball back for the Eagles as the Troy Kohler goes in for another ground and pound attack. And I think the Eagles have found something on the ground because they kept running the ball to the left side of that O-line and they was getting positive yards with it. But like I tell y'all all the time, if I can see it behind the screen, then the South Carolina State defense can definitely see it as they blow it up in the backfield. And on third and short, that defense will bend, but they will not break as Dwayne Nicholas comes up with this huge interception, which takes away the Eagles' chance to get points while they're down two. This is a huge interception. As you can see it, the sideline is turned, the fans is turned, as well as Nicholas was turned because that was a huge play for that Bulldogs defense. But like I said, it was a dog fight, and them Eagles was not letting up nowhere soon. And with this huge drop pass by the Bulldogs, this gives the Eagles chance at life. That's why they're celebrating on defense because that was a huge stop for them. As you can see, it's under three minutes left in the fourth quarter, so that was a huge stop for Central's defense. Now, can their offense come down the field and score? Let's see. With Richards backs against the wall, he tries to throw the swing pass to the right, but it is back down from the Bulldogs' D lineman, and that's a stop on second down. Like I said, man, that Bulldogs' defense is looking great. On third and long, Richards drops back, tries to find someone over the middle, but the Bulldogs bat the ball down. And he said, man, I got that thing in a seatbelt. Fourth and long coming up here. It's fourth in the game. What do you do? The Bulldogs drop back in their coverage. Richards drops back for the pass. Great protection from O-line. Starts to roll out the pocket. Richards throws out the pocket. Finds the running back, Cola, who gets the crazy one-hand catch, but he can't hold on to it. The pass goes incomplete. The pass out of bounds. And as you can see it from the Central Eagle fans that were there, they knew that their chances of going to ATL were very slim at the moment. With the Bulldogs extra excited, some of the fans had stormed the field a millisecond too early before the game was over. But eventually, the game was over. The Bulldogs take the win 26 to 24 over the Eagles. And the Bulldogs were very vocal about all roles coming through them in the MIAC. Top off! It's about that time! Top off! It's about that time! And we won the MIAC! That's the luck, we Can't wait to see the A. Back to the A. <laughs> Beat State. Y'all know what's going on. Y'all, it's game day. When the band is what you hear and everybody here is cheering, all your worries disappearing. Y'all, it's game day. Whether televised or streaming live in person while you're screaming, no more waiting, no more dreaming. Y'all, it's game day.